Make a 3D printable soap holder with a honeycomb pattern that fits perfectly on its box, while learning time-saving fusion workflows. We'll start this fusion tutorial by creating a new component. As always, keyboard shortcuts will appear in the bottom left corner of the canvas. We'll use two components in this tutorial. Organizing your parts this way unlocks smarter workflows with assemblies, 3D printing settings, the parametric timeline and more. After naming your active component, create a sketch on the horizontal construction plane. Choose the circumscribed polygon tool and start your sketch from the center of the canvas. This offers several advantages and generally makes your design process smoother compared to starting from a random spot. Set the radius to 10 mm if you're following along with my dimensions. Just keep in mind that these are for demonstration purposes, I'm not designing for any specific product requirements. Create two sketch lines and convert them to construction lines, since they are for reference only and not part of the final design. We'll use these lines later to define directions for the honeycomb pattern. Snap the line pointing to the side to the midpoint of a polygon edge. Fusion will help you find it automatically. Next, create a rectangular pattern. Keep in mind that Fusion has two rectangular pattern tools, one for sketches and one for solid bodies. In the sketch environment, once you activate the rectangular pattern tool, a pop-up menu appears. Select the polygon edges as your objects and the construction lines as your direction inputs. We'll oversketch the pattern by creating more polygons than we need. This saves time and adds flexibility later in the design. Set the distribution to spacing to control the distance between polygons and the direction to symmetric so the pattern extends evenly in both directions. A radius of 10 mm equals a diameter of 20 mm. You can set the distance to 22.5 mm to create a small gap between each polygon. For quantity, you can set both directions to 10. This ensures we have more polygons than needed, giving us flexibility while saving time and avoiding the need for exact measurements. As you can see, there are a lot of polygons, but don't worry. We'll just take what we need from this rough draft. Next, start a center rectangle sketch. Begin from the origin to keep your design predictable, symmetrical and easy to manage. Set the height to 125 mm if you're following along with my dimensions and use 85 mm for the width for now. This width isn't correct, but that's okay. The exact value is tricky to calculate since we only know the distances in specific directions, not the distance from the center of the polygon to its pointed edge. We'll find a smooth way to figure out that distance soon. But first, if you accidentally made your center rectangle with construction geometry like I did, go ahead and switch those lines to regular geometry. This rectangle is part of the actual design, so it needs to be standard lines, not construction lines. Finding the exact width to place the center rectangle perfectly within the polygon is tricky, but it's important for the design, so instead we'll solve it with the help of a couple of construction lines. Fusion makes it easy to find the midpoint of a polygon side and locating the center is simple. However, using the inspect tool can be tricky. A better approach is to trim the excess lines and place a dimension instead. This not only gives you the exact measurement but also creates a solid reference for other dimensions. First, place a dimension, then double click the dimension you want to change, then select the one you want to reference. Update the formula to say times 2 since the center rectangle side is twice the length of the dimension we captured. 
Of course, this is just one way to find the middle of a polygon side, so feel free to share your own tips and workflows in the comments below. The center rectangle sketch serves multiple purposes and the first is using it as a frame for the extrusion. To save a few clicks, jump straight into the extrude command without closing the sketch. If you're following my dimensions, extrude the area between the polygons by 2.5 mm. If your sketch was automatically hidden, turn it back on. We'll use the extrude command again, this time from the surface tab. It's the one marked with an orange icon. Select the frame and extrude it up to the top of your polygon pattern. This creates a parametric relationship, so if you change the pattern's height later, the frame will update automatically. Confirm the new body operation and use Thicken to give the frame a 3 mm thickness. You can leave it as a new body for now if you haven't decided if you want to combine the bodies. Combining the solid bodies is simple. Just select the target and tool body, then confirm the operation. We'll come back to the honeycomb lid component later. For now, activate the parent component in the browser and create a new component. This one will be for the box beneath the honeycomb lid. Just like with the first component, make it a standard internal component and activate it so you can start working inside it right away. Start by creating a sketch on top of the honeycomb lid component. This way, the box will update automatically if you make changes to the lid later on. Use geometry from the lid component by projecting linked sketch lines into the box component. This keeps everything fully parametric. Selecting the inner geometry can be time consuming since we joined the frame with the honeycomb pattern earlier, but that's okay. Just project the outer edges of the frame and work from there. The purple sketch line shows that it's linked to the original geometry. Offset it minus 3 mm inward and 3 mm outward to create a sketch profile for upcoming steps. This approach is an alternative to the surface modeling method we used earlier, where we extruded a thin surface and applied the thicken command. Select the profile and make sure to select both sections when extruding downward. You'll get an instant preview as you adjust the distance setting. I'll go with negative 25 mm here since I'm not working with specific product requirements. One way to choose a good depth is to look at similar products. Another is to print a quick prototype and see how it feels. That's one of the big advantages of 3D printing. The lid intersects with the box, so use the combine command. Set the box as the target body and the lid as the tool body. Change the operation to cut and check keep tools. We still want to keep the lid in the model. Right now the lid fits too tightly inside the box. To make it easier to place the lid we'll need to add a bit of clearance. To add clearance, use the offset face command. The ideal distance depends on your 3D printer settings and personal preference.
I'll use negative one millimeter to push the face outward slightly. If you found a better distance for a good fit, let us know in the comments. We've got a few important steps left, but first, a quick reminder. Save your project if you haven't already. It's easy to forget when you're deep into modeling and having fun. Improve the user experience, enhance the look, and increase strength by adding fillets to the corners of your product. There are many fillet settings worth exploring, but it's also fine to keep things simple and stick with the default values. We're filleting three edges per corner, and with four corners, that gives us 12 edges total. It can be tricky to keep track, but a quick glance at the selection count in the bottom right corner will confirm when all 12 edges are selected. Set the fillet to 2 mm for a smooth, rounded look. We'll apply the same to the lid component. Just make sure to activate it first, so the fillet actions are recorded in the correct timeline. Use 2 mm for the lid as well. When you're done, turn the box component visibility back on to take a quick look at your work before moving on. Everything looks good, but we still need to take care of the bottom. A quick way to fix this, without creating a new sketch, is to use the patch tool. This creates an infinitely thin surface that covers the open area. Orbit to the underside of your model, hide the lid and extrude the patched surface 3 mm upward. Make sure the operation is set to join to turn the surface into a solid body. Let's wrap things up with a few final tips and video recommendations. You can easily add appearances to your parts. Just drag and drop a material from the library onto your model. Feel free to get creative and explore the different categories to find something that fits your style. If you're into honeycomb patterns, check out the two videos linked at the end. They've got hundreds of likes and thousands of views. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for investing your time and I'll see you in the next project.